This is Algebra 2, Unit 10, Lesson 12 on Solving Fractional Equations. Now, when we solve fractional equations, we learned a technique back in Algebra 1 for getting rid of the fraction. So we're going to expand on that in Algebra 2 with a little more complicated problems. But let's start out with, first of all, with two fractions set equal to each other. When you have two fractions set equal to each other, we usually use cross multiplication. So one fraction equals another fraction, we cross multiply. So 5 times 4x plus 5, remember you're going to have to distribute the 5, equals 2 times x minus 1. Okay, now make sure you distribute. This is going to be 20x plus 25 equals 2x minus 2. All right, and then we just solve it like we normally would. Move the x's to one side, move the 2x over here. That gives me 18x plus 25 equals negative 2. Subtract the 25. That's going to give me negative 27. And then divide by 18. And that is going to be a fraction. And it reduces by 9, so this is going to be negative 3 over 2. So there we go. That's your answer. X is equal to negative 3 over 2. Now, it's not hard to cross-multiply. Just make sure that you distribute and watch your signs. Okay, let's try this one. Yes, you can cross-multiply on this, but remember, x plus 1 times x minus 6 is going to be a FOIL. x plus 1 times x minus 6. This times this is going to be a FOIL. Equals 2 minus 2x times 2. I'm just going to write it like this, and that's going to be a distribute. So we have to FOIL this. x times x is x squared. Outside inside is going to be negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5x. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. And then 2 times 2 minus x, distribute, is 4 minus 2x. All right, quadratic equation means we have to get this equal to 0. So we have to move these to the other side. So we're going to minus the 4 and add the 2x. So that gives me x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. Um, quadratic equation, factor, factor, factor. So this is going to be x minus 5 and x plus 2 is equal to 0. Set the factors equal to 0. We get x is equal to 5. And x is equal to negative 2. So there's my two answers. Okay, so there's actually two values of x that you could plug in here that will make these, these fractions equal. All right, now let's look at some equations that have more than uh, just two fractions set equal to each other. For example, 1 half minus 9 over 4x equals 3 over 4x. Now, we learned a technique back in Algebra 1 to get rid of the fractions in an equation by multiplying by the common denominator. That still applies. The only difference is your common denominator may contain variables this time. So we want to look for the least common denominator for all the fractions in the equation. So let's look at the denominators we have. We have 2 we have 4x, and we have 4x. So common denominator, the number part, is going to be 4. But notice there's also an x in these two, so the, the denominator has to contain an x. So 4x is going to be your common denominator. All right, so to know that, once we know that, we can use the LCD, least common denominator, to clear the equation of the denominators. So let's try it. If I take 1 half minus 9 over 4x, equals 3 over 4x, and I multiply each term by 4x. Technically, it's 4x over 1, just to keep it lined up. I'm going to put them up here, and then times 4x here. This is over 1. What happens is the denominator will cancel this, leaving 2x. The denominator cancels the 4x, cancels the 4x, leaving minus 9, and the 4x cancels the 4x, leaving 3. Oh, that's much simpler. So multiplying by the common denominator, the least common denominator will work. Now, it doesn't have to be the least one, but the least one will give you the smallest numbers. So to solve the remaining equation, 2x is equal to 12, divide by 2, and x is equal to 6. So where we go. My answer to my problem, x is equal to 6. So the trick to doing fractional equations and getting rid of the fractions is multiplying by the least common denominator. So what we want to do is figure out what the least common denominator is going to be for the terms. Which of the following values of x solves this equation? 
Well, let's get rid of the fractions. Our denominators are 6, 10, and 15. So what can I multiply each one of these by that will get rid of the denominator? What's my LCD? Between 6, 10, and 15, it'll probably be 30. So I'm going to write 30 up here. So technically it's 30 over 1 for each one of them. So I'm thinking 30 over 1, so I'm going to cancel the 6 into the 30, leaving a 5. So that gives me 5, but it has to multiply the entire fraction, x minus 4. I'll multiply it out in a minute. 10 goes into 30 three times. And then 15 goes into 30 twice. And then I have 2 times 31 is 62. Okay, now I'm going to distribute. 5x minus 20 plus 3x minus 6 equals 62. Combine your terms. 8x minus 26 equals 62. Add your 26, and 8x is equal to 88, and then divide by 8, and that means that x is equal to 11. So it's answer number 4. So multiplying by the common denominator is a really quick method. You just have to make sure that you're following all the rules. When you cancel, you have to multiply the entire numerator by what's left. All right, let's try a little more complicated ones. These have uh, variables in them, and we have to figure out what the common denominator is, but the process is still the same. Now, you just have to be very, very careful of watching your numbers, watch your signs. So let's start with this first one. Uh, we have this equation, we want to look at the denominators. We have 10x, 5x, and x squared. So what's my LCD going to be? Well, number-wise, my LCD between 5 and 10 is going to be 10, and my, my x is going to be the highest power of x. I can change an x, I can cancel an x into an x squared, but I can't change an x squared into an x. So my common denominator variable is going to be x squared. Okay? All right, so I want to multiply each of these terms by x squared. So I'm going to put, or 10x squared, excuse me. I'm going to put 10x squared up next to each one of these. 10x squared, 10x squared, 10x squared. Okay. Now be very careful of your signs when you do this. So this is going to be 10, cancels 10, so this is going to be 1 times x squared. I'm going to write the ones in front of it just so you know where I'm multiplying. All right, then I have x cancels x squared leaving x, so it's negative 1 times 10x. I'll multiply these out in a minute equals 5x cancels 10x squared, leaving 2x. So this is going to be 1 times 2x. And then x squared cancels x squared, and I'm going to have minus 2 times 10. Okay, so when I multiply these out, don't forget the signs. This is x squared. This is negative 1 times 10x, so that's negative 10x. 1 times 2x is just 2x. Negative 2 times 10 is negative 20. And we have another quadratic equation. So we want to get this equal to 0, minus the 2x, and add the 20. I get x squared minus 12x plus 20 is equal to 0. Okay, quadratic equation, factor, factor, factor. Double bubbles. Um, signs on this one, if, since this is plus and this is minus, it's going to be minus, minus. All right, the factors of 20 that add up to 12 would be 10 and 2. Set the factors equal to 0. and solve each one for x. This one's going to be x equals 10, and this one's going to be x equals 2. There we go. There's my common denominator. All right, common denominator in this one. We have 2x, x squared, 4x, and 2x squared. All right, number-wise, my LCD between 2 and 4 will be 4, and my highest power of x would be x squared. All right, so I'm going to multiply all of these by 4x squared, every single term. This doesn't work unless you do everything. Okay, cancel. 2 goes into 4x squared, 2x squared times, so it's 1 times 2x squared. x cancels x squared, leaving x, so this is going to be 3 times 4x. Uh, then I have x squared cancels x squared, so this is minus 1 times 4 equals 4x cancels 4x squared, leaving just x, so that's 1 times x. And then 2x squared cancels 4x squared, leaving just 2, 1 times 2 
there. Now, yes, you can do multiply this in your head. I'm just writing down this so you can see where I get the multiplies from. 1 times 2x squared is 2x squared. 3 times 4x is 12x. Negative 1 times 4 is minus 4. 1 times x is x. 1 times 2 is 2. There we go. Another quadratic equation. All right, we want to get it equal to 0, so we're going to minus the x and minus the 2. Watch your signs. 2x squared plus 11x minus 6 equals 0. Okay, that does factor. It's going to be 2x in x this time, though. All right, the factors of 6 to add up to 11, whatever one goes here is multiplied by 2. Well, because they're different signs, this would probably be 6 and this one would be 1, because that will give me 12 and 1. So this would be plus 6 and minus 1 will give me the 11. Set them equal to 0. Solve for x. This one's going to be x equals negative 6. And this one is 2x equals 1, so x is going to equal 1 half. So there's your two values of x. So x equals a half or x equals negative 6. So we just multiplied by the LCD. Okay, the last ones we're going to look at are a little more complicated. And there is one more other thing we have to take into account. Because fractional equations often involve denominators containing variables, it is important to check that we see if any solutions to the equation make it undefined. Remember, undefined means denominator equals zero. So we have to be aware of values of x that will make the denominator zero. If we get a value of x that will make the denominator zero in the original fraction, then it is called an extraneous root and we have to uh, reject it. So common denominator, remember, has to work in all of the fractions. So we have x plus 5, x squared plus 8, x plus 15, and x plus 3. So before I start, I'm going to factor this denominator so I can see what I, my common denominator is going to be. Well, handily enough, this factors as x and x, plus and plus, 5 times 3 is 15 and adds up to 8, so it's 5 plus 3. All right, so before I even start, though, to get my common denominator, what value of x will make this denominator 0? Well, if x is equal to negative 5. So x can equal negative 5 for this particular one. All right, so that one will make this one 0. What will make this 0? x plus 3 means x, uh, negative 3 will make that 0. So if we get an answer of x equals negative 5 or x equals negative 3, we have to reject it. Okay, so common denominator. Looking at all of these, remember your common denominator, when you have um, factors, you have to have all of the factors there. So your common denominator on this is going to be both x plus 5 and x plus 3. Because you have x plus 5 here, you have x plus 3 here, you have both there. So I'm going to write them both on each of these factors. x plus 5, x plus 3. x plus 5, x plus 3. And then x plus 5, x plus 3. Okay. Multiply each one and cancel the denominator. x plus 5 cancels x plus 5, leaving x plus 1 times x plus 3. I'll multiply them out in a minute. This one cancels both. x plus 5 cancels x plus 5. x plus 3 cancels x plus 3. So that's just going to be plus 18. The 18 is still there. And on the other one, x plus 3 cancels, leaving the x plus 5, so it's 9 times x plus 5. All right, so now all we have to do is multiply. Foil these two. x plus 1 times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x plus 1x is 4x. 1 times 3 is 3, plus 18, equals 9x, plus 45. All right, we want to simplify and get this equal to 0. This is x squared plus 4x plus 21 is equal to 9x plus 45. Subtract the 9x, subtract the 45, and we get x squared minus 5x, minus uh, 24 is equal to 0. Factor, factor, factor. Um, this is going to be minus 8 and plus 3. Set them equal to 0. And we get x is equal to 8 and x is equal to negative 3. Uh-oh. Now remember we said here that x can't be negative 3 because it'll make the denominator 0 on the fraction. See right here, if I plug in negative 3, that's going to make that 0, or on the middle one as well. So we actually have to reject this one because it's extraneous. It, does, it makes the denominator 0. So your answer for this one is only going to be x equals 8. Okay, 
So let's save the last one for class on the next uh, day. So um, you can try it out now if you want to and see if you get the right answer.